It's time for your daily crypto update with Framework Fortune Crypto. I'm your host Ben. Now let's dive in. So Bitcoin was rebounding pretty decently there until all of a sudden this past four hours or at least the last couple hours on this candle we started having a dump back down. We're testing 45,000 as support. If we crack that 40,000 the next line like I was saying yesterday is at 42. Now there has been some breakouts on some altcoins, so I don't know if we'll get that dip or not, but it is downtrending at the moment under the 200-day, actually below all EMAs on the 4-hour. Let's take a look on the daily chart. Yeah, so on the daily chart, we're right now right below the 50. We've pushed above it a couple of times, but then getting pushed right back below it. So we really want to see this candle close above the 50-day moving average. This big pressure of selling right here, this wick, that is a nasty wick down from 46 to 45. So that could signal some selling pressure we're seeing at the tops of these candles. Bitcoin just struggling to try to push back up towards that 50,000 area. It is possible that we could see more of a pullback on Bitcoin. If it holds here, it should rebound and push back up to 50 probably by next weekend. Ethereum, you can see I've drawn a downtrend and this was on the four hour, but has broken it on the daily there above the 50 day. So a little bit different story in the price action on Ethereum than Bitcoin. Let's go ahead on into the four hour chart so we can see a little bit better. Yeah, you can see where all these candles were connecting to make this downtrend that is broken though. And at the moment, we're just testing that 3300 as support again. We have built some recent higher lows. The bottom of this candle, the bottom of this candle, and now the bottoms of these two candles. So I think we're probably going to see Ethereum hold up here as long as Bitcoin doesn't dump drastically. Cardano has tried to come back up twice. 275 is holding up as pretty strong resistance like it was holding up as pretty strong support back here on this previous move up. So Cardano still a little sketchy. It just is not getting that move. We should have seen this up to three by now. If there was something good with those contracts coming out, you'd think the hype would come back in this. But so far, just barely able to rebound. So we'll see. I mean, it has it is back above 250. So as long as it can stay above 250, uh, I think it's fine. I just don't like this double little peak here that we have. So mask I was talking about this one being down at the trend line and that I was probably going to get into it and it was looking like it would make a nice bounce and I absolutely did as you can see here. I bought a total of about 33 mask and you can see where I got them at there 881 945 913 so I was just adding slowly as it was moving around with the price action and then I did sell seven of them at 1296 uh, close to the top here at 13 so I'm still holding 26 looking for the break of 13 but mask running up back to this area there's some strong resistance at this 1275 area that it's getting held up at it was support through here now it's turning the resistance through here and it's still acting as some resistance. The 10 day did just cross both EMAs. So as long as it can hold up in this 1250 area or maybe even better if it can hold 1275 like it's trying to do right at this moment. Then we can see another leg up on mask. I would say we'll get slowed down at 15. And then after 15 we'll probably have clear skies up to about 18 and a half. 18 and a half to 20 where all these wicks are that little range is going to be some strong resistance but very nice swing so far if you got in off of this trend line like i've been talking about nice job so we have quite a bit of top gainers in the top three after mask are all cosmos ecosystem dvp and sentinel which i've been talking about you can see pushing for all new highs up to 043 very nice move there. Akash 
pushing up close to those that previous recent high it just made of six dollars testing 550 right now as some resistance and then cosmos adam breaking over for all new highs at 34 dollars so cosmos just today broke for a new high there's some resistance at that 34 area uh, probably 35 as well probably a little resistance zone we should see some type of little bounce off of 30 and i think it, adam will test 35 whether it'll break 35 i don't know but i mean i've been talking about this cosmos ecosystem for the last month and liam's been talking about it on his channel for i don't know the last six months you can just see we are not the only people who think this is a solid project because every token just about and coin in that ecosystem is ripping. XPRT is up 11% today and that's persistence as well. So persistence working on breaking out of that $12 area. We've got four at least in the Cosmos ecosystem pushing for all new highs or pushing up to previous highs. Persistence has room all the way up to 16 if it can break over 12. 12 is going to be pretty strong there. I'm going to go ahead and draw that line. And you'll see all this friction back through here at that 12 area and now here. So that whole ecosystem just looking good. Algorand breaking over that downtrend, pushing back up to 250 almost. We got to like, what, 247? So it did get rejected there. A little indecision with a little sell off candle here, a little bearish candle, but. Buyers pushed it back off of the 10-day moving average so far. I think Algorand is going to push through to 50. That's why I've been talking about it a lot. And it's been on a lot of the thumbnails because it looks very bullish. I'm going to start covering Avalanche. It's been brought to my attention by several people. This thing has popped up to 65, making a new high just recently. Been on a nice uptrend. Pretty low supply coin. Uh, I think there's only about $250 million in the circulating supply so that's pretty nice having a little rejection there but we're hitting all times highs so the same thing on algorand when it hit all time highs you're going to have a pullback the emas are lined up the way they need to be uh, i don't think i don't think this is done either this looks like it may still have some left in it in any case avalanche should now have very strong support at 50 dollars, as that was very strong resistance in the past so clv rebounding back into the channel after this little double bottom it is still testing the bottom of the channel if we can get some confirmation of this which would be a little breakout here in the next 10 hours out over this downtrend if we get that confirmation there then we could see clv start running again if we don't it's probably going to dump out of this back to this dollar 20 area H bar I just started covering but this thing has started ripping so those of you requested H bar nice job shouting this one out you can see it's close to trying to push to that 45 cent area which is around the all time highs and looks like it may try to get up there it is having a little pullback strong rejection at 40 cents but curling down holding the 10 day and it looks like it may try to curl back up within the next 10 to 12 hours and retest 40 cents. And if not, there's still quite a bit of support below it at that 35 line, some at 33, 34, 50 days at 32 and a half just about. So a lot of support right below it. I, I think we just see this rip as long as nothing happens crazy with Bitcoin or Ethereum. No sharp drops on those. Now, Luna had pushed all the way up to 43 again. So there's a lot of resistance right across the tops at this 45 area. A little bit of a resistance zone, really. Like 43 and a half to 45. It is trying to hold the bottom of this, which this may be the start of a new channel. But the bottom is right at 38.50. Going to want to see it bounce off of 38.50 and come back up for the break. If Luna does not bounce here, it will come back down to the 50. And if it cracks that, Luna could start going back bearish. But still looking pretty bullish, really. I mean, you look at the overall chart. We're in a whole new price level that's starting to hold up in a new channel. I'm scrolling down through here. Some of these are still looking pretty sketchy. Matic is very close to having a pullback. It is trying to hold right across here at this dollar 
what is that, dollar thirty line basically, where it held up here, here, and here. If it can hold that, it'll bounce back up, but you can see where the 50 and 200 are right together. So that's going to be some very strong resistance at 140, like it has been the whole entire time on Polygon. Polygon really needs some big buying volume or some good PR or something to come out on this to get it over 140. It is just struggling so hard to stay above it. OMG is one to keep a watch on. Its all-time highs were 15.58. We're running into this $10 resistance at the moment. Break over 10, we can see this run up to 15. So I have bought a little bit of this so far. I've gotten 30 with an average of about 940. It has had a pullback today from that level. I may go ahead and look to grab some more of this if it continues to hold $9 support. If it cracks below 9, I'm going to have to get out. But looks like it's going to try to rebound here at the top or at this $9 area. So Solana pulling all the way back down to the 50-day. Tried to hold that 175. In this string of consolidation here, this candle did drop to 167. So we still have a little bit of a higher low here if it can hold. And if it does hold, it'll bounce off that 50, break through this downtrend, and continue to run, come back up for another 200 test. So the key thing for it right now is to hold this 50 day on the four hour chart if it starts cracking this it could drop all the way back down to the 200 at this 115 area there is a little bit of support at 150 that could try to hold and i think we'll at least slow down there if it drops we'll see how we'll see what happens this has been a massive run on solana so if it does start having a pullback to the 200 it wouldn't be that surprising now I haven't forgot about Fetch. It has been pulling back since I said I was loading up on it. And I've continued to load up on it. I may buy some more here if it holds the 50 day. Flip over to Coinbase. You can see all my buy orders where I've been buying the hell out of Fetch. I've got some in the 95, some in the low 90s. I got a little bit at a dollar. I have some in the low 83s. I did sell some through here to move some money around then I bought back in uh, another 100 at 88 and then I did grab 110 at 81 when it dipped way down there so I'm expecting fetch to still rip it's just testing the dollar it has this nice little triangle of consolidation and it's almost to that tip so right here where we're pulling back we may not hold the 50 day if we do great if it drops to the Trend line, as long as the whole 80 cents, I expect it to bounce back up, rip through this triangle, and rip through a dollar again. So let's take a quick look at the news headlines. ARK Investment Management opens door for fund to invest in Canadian crypto ETFs. A little Canadian adoption there. Degenerate Ape NFT sells for more than $1 million on Solana. Interesting. U.S. Treasury officials, financial industry executives meet met to discuss stable coins. Let's take a look at that a little deeper. Discuss regulation. That's what no, that we don't want to hear that. Let's see. It's the report was cited three unnamed sources, so we don't even know who the sources are. According to two of the sources, the Treasury officials inquired if stable coins would need direct oversight if demand for them increased markedly. They also inquired how regulators might limit the risk potentially occurring if too many people tried to cash in their stable coins at roughly the same time and whether the most significant stable coins should have traditional assets backing. That's very interesting because the US dollar does not have any assets backing it. So I don't know why they're concerned about cryptos for. It looks like they covered how stable coins could be structured and used, whether there is sufficient regulatory structure in place to address the security concerns, I don't see why there's any security concerns. The blockchains run themselves. You don't really need the government to do it for you. They're collecting information, did not offer opinions on potential regulatory moves. In a statement cited by Reuters, Treasury spokesman John Rizzo said that in examining potential benefits and risk of stablecoins for users, markets, and the financial system, the department was meeting with a broad range of stakeholders. This is very interesting that they said stakeholders. And the reason why is because if you go to the World Econ Forum, which is where all the great reset stuff is coming from, whether you believe in it or not, 
They have a website and a YouTube channel where they live stream the whole Davos conference this year. Uh, President Xi Jinping was there from China. Uh, John Kerry from the U.S. was there. A whole list of high-profile po political names around the globe and corporations working with the World Econ Forum, Google, Facebook, Goldman Sachs, and the list goes on. But you can see stakeholder capitalism. The World Econ Forum is as big on stakeholder capitalism. If you go do some research on stakeholder capitalism, it's not really capitalism. It's a weird mix that they just kind of made up. But it's not really free market at all because they want a one world government. So, you know, coincidence, maybe, but seeing that more people in power are meeting about cryptos and they've specifically, and this one fellow, John Rizzo, specifically mentioned this word stakeholders, not shareholders, stakeholders. Coincidence, maybe. You be the judge, only time will tell. But that's it for the daily crypto update. If you want to check more into this news article and the World Econ Forum, links will be in the description below. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Until next time.